Hey guys, welcome back to Bridal Sewing Techniques. And today we're gonna talk about all things mesh, net, nude, illusion, stretch, power mesh, fabrics. So we're gonna talk about all the different types. We're gonna talk about my different sources that I use. Um, I want to hear from you in the comments. Please tell me about the sources that you use. And this is uh, the second in my series of how to create your own uh, bridal line. And um, I felt like it was important to talk about fabrics. Uh, we did some sketching in the previous one that was more of just kind of like, um, more of like a brainstorm kind of sketch, the direction that we wanted to go into, inspiration, mood board kind of feeling. So now it's time to get down into the nitty gritty, either as a designer, um, looking at what you need for your designs, or perhaps this is simply um, you as someone who does alterations or custom dressmaking, and you want to know all the ins and outs of these different types of fabrics. I can tell you that they're kind of hard to find. They're hard to source. And I get asked about it all the time. I have put off doing this video because there is no tidy answer when you ask me, uh, where do I get my net and mesh from? So what I decided I would do is I'm just going to basically, um, divulge everything. <laughs> I'm just gonna like unload my boxes that I have. Um, and as I get um, shipments in, I always put like where I get them from and what it's called on their website so that I could order the same thing. Um, so I'm going to show you all of these things. I'm not holding anything back from you as usual. Um, i talk openly about my sources. I talk openly about the prices of things. So we're just going to go through this and I hope that, um, I hope nobody's online store gets, um, swamped. <laughs> I hope it's a blessing to them, but oh man, I don't want to overwhelm them. Here we go. So in this video, I also want to show you up close what these different fabrics are like and how I would use them or have used them. Okay, so since I already showed you that one label, we'll, we'll stick with that one to start with. Uh, super fine, soft, nude color, okay? Um, I am not a fan of this as a color name, but I didn't pick it. I'm just telling you what it is so that if you need to order this color, you know what the name of it is. Okay, so this is a super fine, soft, and boy is it ever. This is unusually fine and soft, very, very thin, and it's got a stretch this way and a little bit less stretch this way. Okay. I actually use this a lot for its invisibility. This has been a really handy fabric for me. I'm not really sure um, how well it would hold up as far as durability. As you all know, um, these are some pretty popular fabrics right now. Uh, the the illusion look with the lace or the tattoo lace they call it and uh, for the most part they're not super durable the most durable I found is more like the uh, the French tool I think is what it's called this is from our friends at Gelmore so a little more stretch this way a little less stretch this way it's still quite see-through. But look at the size of the holes in that net compared to the super fine. Uh, these are opposite ends of the spectrum, okay? This is a quite a large hole. And I would say this is solidly considered a net. 
and this is one of the smallest holes that I have of all of my fabrics here. So we'll just start with that, the difference there. This is the one I already showed you that's just the ivory and it's the same deal. It's the super fine. Very, very small. This does not look or feel like tulle. It's, it's different. It's much finer than tulle. This is a color, but I thought it would be a good example of what I consider just like your average tool. Very, very light. It's got quite a bit of bounce to it. We're all familiar with the tool. This is a little bit different from that. It's not the same. Here's another example of a tool, and I love that they send you some samples with this. This is from New York Designer Fabrics. You could certainly still use this for like an illusion back um, kind of idea. It doesn't have quite as much stretch as like a power mesh or something that we would often use, but this is the color Makeup. This is a very neutral color for that. And this is softer than our normal tool that we're used to seeing for veils and costuming. This is gonna be kind of what I keep referring back to, the normal tool that we see for veils and whatnot, okay? Um, so that's gonna be kind of our baseline for how things feel. This is so much softer than that normal kind of tool. It's This is a very soft net. This is also soft, and I regret that I cannot give you the source for this one. I'm giving you the source wherever I have it. Typically when I do an order, this is what I do. I, I put all the information down, but sometimes it just gets lost. This has a lot of stretch to it not so much that way. It is so soft, lovely. Um, so this does work nice for um, like adding sleeves to a gown when the bride's gonna need that stretch for her range of motion. This is a lovely fabric for that. So I wanna tell you how I would source for a specific project, whether it be an alteration or an original design. Um, I typically do not just look up a fabric supplier and, you know, order all the full yardage from them. That's not typically how I roll. Um, I'm normally gonna order just a yard or two and have that kind of like as my sample, but I keep it on hand for when I need it for clients. Here is a mesh that it doesn't have quite as much stretch as a power mesh. Got a little bit of stretch there. It almost has like a crispy feeling to it, but it's very, very strong. So this kind, hear that? It's That's that crispy I was talking about. This kind could be used for putting the back on a gown for say like a plus size bra bride or a curvy bride who needs a little bit more support, a bride who has recently lost a lot of weight and needs more support because of that. This would be a very good option for that. Now this is that very soft mesh that I used in my video about how to add support to a gown. It is a type of power mesh, I think is what I was looking up when I found it. It is incredibly soft, and this feels very cool, very, very cool to the skin. So this came from Saltex, Frank at Saltex Fabrics. Um, this I would kind of line behind um, what's already going on with a gown if they just needed a little bit more support. You can see the stretch it has. It's a nice four-way stretch and it seems pretty even each way. 
Um, the, the type of stretch, the two-way or the four-way stretch can be really handy based on, you know, where do you need your strength versus where do you need to have some give for the gown to fit right and to be supportive, but yet for a bride to be able to move around in it. Now, this super cool light fabric, I also use this to line my straps and tool if it's abrasive and is bothering a bride. I'll just cut out a strip, whatever width it needs to be, and then I will use um, uh, like a fusible, like a fusible webbing. I'll just put it on with that. And that makes it affordable. If she wants it hand stitched on, we can do that. But if she's already that sensitive, a lot of times the hand stitching is going to be a little abrasive to her as well because we would probably have to use an invisible stitch. So this is very, very handy to have on hand for that. And you guys have seen me use that in other videos. Don't forget, please take a moment if you really appreciate me getting all this out for you and revealing all these sources to you. Please do take a moment right now to hit like and make sure you hit subscribe and you can also share this video. Doing all of that really supports my channel. I really appreciate it. Um, another way that I can get a little bit of revenue from this channel, which helps me to continue doing it, is the buy me a coffee and that is found on my website. It's also found um, on my channel banner. Um, and um, I think it's also on the About Us page of my YouTube channel. So you can always go in there and it's basically just a way to give me a tip in $5 increments. It's called Buy Me A Coffee. It's super easy and I really appreciate it, guys. All right, so this color is called Cream Buttermilk. This is a soft tool. So again, this is definitely very much in the tool category but it's a little bit finer and it has a very soft touch. One key word that I have found to be very trustworthy um, in this whole world of net and mesh where keywords are really used fast and loose, I do find that the word soft is usually pretty believable. If the descriptor says soft, that's usually talking about the fabric is very soft to the skin when you use it. And it usually has a very nice drape to it as well. Oh, this one is so useful. Okay, so this one is going to give you lots of support for if you were making like an illusion-based uh, bustier is the way that I would describe this one. Let's see. You guys have seen this before. It's. It's this fabric, it's got that little bit of a sheen to it. We've all seen this in lingerie. But it's super strong. Very little stretch. It's just enough. Very easy to sew. This one, because it doesn't have so much stretch to it, um, it's not going to be wanting to bump up on you while you're sewing it. And this comes in a variety of colors as well. If I had to only use one website to source all of my net slash mesh slash tool, I would pick Etsy, just so you know. You guys always ask who my supplier is for this. I don't have one supplier. Um, another thing that is super helpful is when your bride, when you know that she needs sleeves added or some type of alteration, um, a lot of you ask me this question in the comments, where do you source your laces that match the currently manufactured gowns from the major designers? Um, the answer to that is I don't. I have the bride go through the bridal salon that she purchased her dress from that carries that line and they place an order for the yardage. Um, they'll do the same thing for lace. 
We're gonna get more into lace in the next couple of videos. I'm gonna do um, sourcing bridal fabrics and also bridal laces. So we're gonna break all of this down in this series of how to have your own bridal line. Um, but this is an example of that. This was just some leftover from a project and you guys all recognize this, I'm sure. This is that super soft netting that almost disappears on just about any skin tone. It's a very neutral color, very, very sheer. Um, this is what we see most of the illusion backs made out of. So this is just a little bit left from a supplier. If I had to pick my favorite um, supplier for the illusion net or illusion tool. I would pick one that I have used quite a few times from Etsy and they have such a wide variety of skin tone colors. Um, this is a very useful color. You can imagine if I were just a little bit darker skin tone that this color will blend in uh, from that shade all the way into some of the darkest skin tones that I've worked with. This, believe it or not, because I know it looks a little bit light like this, it works wonders. And this, as you can tell, is just like that gold standard sample fabric that I got. So this is the real deal. You can buy this on Etsy instead of having to find the manufacturer um, the name of this store, it's in Brooklyn, New York. And again, I order through Etsy, but I'm sure you could go directly to them. It's called Nightwear Studios. Excellent, excellent fabric and service. I cannot say enough about them. That's where these three shades came from. Please, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments down below and I'll do my best to answer your question. As always, I took a really deep dive on these fabrics because I know how I use the terms. I know how I've ordered um, using terminology for years and I didn't wanna get things mixed up for you. But I can tell you, and you can do your own research as well, um, when I go searching uh, mesh, net, tool, all the things online, it's, it's like a lot of things in fashion. The jury's kind of out on what, ter what terminology is going to work best for which fabrics. Because as you can tell, there's a lot of overlap in the characteristics of these fabrics. So it's really hard to define. It's really hard to say, oh, this is 100% a mesh. This is a net. When in fact, you know, mesh and net can almost be used interchangeably. And depending on what area of fabric production manufacturing you are talking about, um, mesh or net can be a subset of one or the other. So you might have a supplier who supplies mesh and then they'll say, well, and here is our net. Or you can have a net manufacturer who's like, well, here's our mesh. So it's kind of funny how that works. Um, there's also a, a big variety in the shape, and I want you to see this up close. I always pay attention to this when I'm sourcing the fabric. So let's look at the shape. The shape of the holes. It's almost like little stop signs, right? It's like six-sided. And so is this, this is that super fine. This is the six sided. A lot of times I feel like that gives me a finer look that I would more likely be calling a net or a mesh than a tool. I'm more likely to call the four sided net a tool just like this the French tool four-sided so that's one differentiation that I look for when I'm ordering 
Now let's look at the super fine, since this is often called a super fine tool. And let's see if we can get the deets on this. Yes, four sided. I'm going to put some links in the description below that will uh, give you a head start on finding some of these stores in Etsy. I'll just show you which ones I've used in the past and which ones I feel like have really good stock to choose from. Take care, guys. Bye.